Hi, this is Pam, Pam McGropey Art, and today we are going to paint some Black Eyed Susans. Now these are sort of similar to daisies, and they're just really fun. Now I'm going to show you with two different types of brushes and different effects. I'm going to do it with a number 8 filbert, and this is a number 10 flat. Now my Black Eyed Susans don't have rounded in ends on the petals, they're more uh, spiked. So I'm going to show you both ways, you can pick which one you want to do. Now, um, I'm going to put the stems in later, so we're going to start with our centers, and those are done in Burnt Umber. Let me go ahead and start this with the colors we're going to be using today are Burnt Umber, Daffodil Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Citrus Green, you can also use Fresh Foliage, which is a little bit tamer of a green, um, Pure Orange, and Thicket. And I do believe that's all of them. I don't even think we have any white going on today. So on my palette, I'm going to put out some burnt umber. And I use, I like to use this um, stay, not stay wet, but this palette paper. And I will link to it in the blog post. And here I'm going to take, you can do this with the flat or this filbert. And I'm just going to load it with the burnt umber and follow the outline of the cone shape here. And um, I'm not going to make it perfectly, the edge is perfect. You see they're rumply and bumpy. That is good. That is how they are in nature. There are no absolute perfect fle feathers, flowers in nature. This one is more rounded and less of a cone. The flower is turning a little bit different direction. So I'm going to face those in. Now it's not quite as opaque as I would like it. This is a backwards facing flower, so that's not going to center. So I just got the brown there, and I'm going to go ahead and let that dry really quick. I'll get out my blow dryer and dry it. Now we're going to go over it a second time. These are mostly dry. That one might be a little bit wet. Oh, it's dry. It's just shiny because it's the multi-surface paint, which is a satin rather than a matte. Um, now I'm just going to go back over it and because I, I want deep, dark color there. I want deep dark color so it has a good contrast with the petals. So there we have it. Now I'm going to come in, I'm not going to worry about it drying. I'm just going to put some yellow ochre on my palette, palette paper. And this is the Richeson Gray Matter, something like that, paper, which I use all the time. I like it. I get the uh, larger size and I cut it in half to fit on here, but when I'm doing my oil painting or my large paintings with acrylics, um, professional acrylics, I leave it big, leave them as big sheets. So here I am loading my yellow ochre onto this brush and I'm just going to pull in some petals. I press down and drag and then I'm twisting as I come to the center. You notice that? So it kind of makes it narrow. And then I'm doing the same here, press, drag, lift as I twist the brush between my fingers. Drag, lift. Now some of the, the points are going to go into the center of that brown or onto it. Don't worry about that. We're going to fix that later and lift. Do this each petal. You can make your petals a little bit closer if you like. And you notice this one is a not exact match for that one. No big deal. I don't even have to add that one, but I did. I wanted to. So now I'm going to do it with my flat brush on this next flower here. Let me make sure you're in, in the scene. I'm going to put my palette over here so you can see me loading better. Let me get this there. That way you can see me loading. Not that it's any rocket science. I'm, so here's the number 10 flat. I might have been better to do an 8 flat, but I'm not going to hunt down one right now. I'm just going to do it here. Now what I'm going to do differently is I'm going to go from the side. I'm going to kind of angle my brush, press, and lift. Angle the brush. See it's not flat. It's angled. Press down, lift. Press down, lift. Press down, lift. And if I want this one a little bit longer, I'll do it over. 
and it kind of gives it a different it gives it a different shape and that's good too so it all depends I I kind of like the uh, square one a little bit better so I'm going to do this petal or this flower with this brush I'm not following. I drew them on just to have placement, but I'm not following that very well, and it doesn't matter. Now, this is these are truncated because this flower is kind of leaning that way, and this is the tips of the flower just right, or the petals right in your face. So that's why these are hashed sideways. And I'm looking at it. Now, no flower, like I said, is perfect. So if it doesn't all connect, or be perfectly even that's fine because when you put it into an entire painting and I have a wildflower workshop that I use black eyed Susans in and you'll see you would see how it just all blends together so oh I should have done this flower too which I'm going to do right now I ran out of yellow ochre I need to get a little bit more on my palette and add that I want to make sure my brush is good and dry well, not completely dry, but a lot of the moisture out of it. And I'm just going to pull some petals for this backwards facing. Now, the, this, the side one is going to kind of pull in. You notice it's kind of a comma stroke and not perfectly straight. Now, with this yellow ochre, it is not opaque. You see the blue is showing through, a bluish color. This is actually called Midnight Garden, mixed with white when I put it on here. So here it is on my palette where I mixed it. I had two colors and then just let streaked it on. But um, this is a darker color. Yellows are not opaque. So I'm going to go over it again with a second coat of yellow ochre once it's dry. Now I'm letting this dry, but that doesn't mean I have to stop painting. I can paint the stems. Now I'm going to use, you could use a liner brush for this if you want, but I'm just going to use my number 10 flat. And I have the greens on my palette from another painting. And I'm just going to go ahead. They're getting a little dry, so I'm going to touch in a dot of water, not dip the brush. I just had a dot of water on the edge of my caddy where I rinse my brushes. So I'm going to decide where I want my stem to come from. Now, obviously, this curves. And then this one looks like it's straight up and down. And it's not hard. You see, I just use the chisel edge of my brush. And I'll just give some little stems up. Now remember, when you the side that you drag, the back side is what will be the predominant color when you have double loaded your brush. Now let me turn, and you'll see how the predominant color is the darker green. But you get a little bit of both. And you don't even have to double load. You could do it in a single color if you desire. So that's looking good, still drying. So I'm gonna um, decide what kind of leaf I want. You don't have to do a particular leaf for the Black Eyed Susan. You don't have to match Black Eyed Susan leaves, but I will attempt to do something similar. So I'm gonna go look it up a little bit and see what I wanna do. So the leaves are kind of elongated and they come out of the stem all along it. I'm still using these two colors. Normally um, they're a darker green, but remember I don't go for realism. So let me see if I can do this. It kind of, they come out and splay and then come to a point. And then let me do that again. Out. Well, I'm kind of twisting the brush, so I'm making that kind of hard for you. So I'm playing here. I should get more dark green. Let me do the dark green and then I can come in and do some highlighting if I wish. So I'm going to come up, comes up, splay it out, and then come to a point. And that's about what they look like. None or two are exactly alike. And that doesn't usually have two coming out at the same spot. Starting on the chisel edge, go out, press your brush, bring it back up to a point.
and I'm just playing here with this to give it some dimension. The green is not opaque, so you can always go back over it. So there is kind of a leaf. This one's a little fat, but that's all right. We'll go ahead and use it. So that's about how you do the leaves. Chisel edge, flatten out, chisel edge. And if you want to clean up the stem, you can just pull the stem, stay right on it, and do that. So that's basically a Black Eyed Susan leaf, a very simplified one. So my phone dinging at me. They're not quite dry. I'm going to get out my blow dryer and dry those Black Eyed Susie petals. So now I'm, these are mostly dry. There's a little spots, the thicker spots that are still wet, but I'm going to put on the second coat of the yellow ochre to make them a little more opaque. And you don't have to follow exactly because any ridges in the paint will mimic the striations that you would have in real flowers. So it all will come together. The striations will mimic like flowers in the garden. We just want to get a little more of that opacity. And I will reload so I keep plenty of paint on the brush. If it gets too gloppy in your brush, rinse it out and then start again. It will tend to start to dry in the brush and therefore it makes the brush get gloppy. That's normal. Just rinse and begin again. I keep reloading. I did all of these with the flat brush. I prefer the flat brush for these type of flowers, but you do have the option of using the filbert. And that's why I showed you with the first one. I always like giving options. And, you know, this one, because it's just opening it, I want these petals closer together, so I'm going to bring some more in there. Okay, so that's all of those. Now while those are drying, I could go over the centers again to blend in that base, but I think I'm not going to. Um, this one isn't quite reaching the center like I would like, so I'm going to pull those up. The beauty of painting loosely is you can Go in and fix things, change things. This is on a piece of wood. What's nice about wood, as opposed to canvas, is if this didn't turn out, I could sand it down and redo it. Um, on a canvas, I could gesso over it, but I would have the texture of the petals, and that would work too, because I like texture in some paintings, and it wouldn't bother me, but others don't. So I'm really liking, you see how these leaves are coming out? Now this one isn't quite opaque. So I could go back into my greens, and it has the background already painted on, and you can just go in. And if I wanted less of the light green, I can load mostly with the dark green, just barely touch in the light green. This one already has some of the light green in it, but I'm liking the streaks it's coming in with. And if you wanted to pull a vein, you just get the light green, and you can, I just want to make sure I don't have it too gloppy, pull in a vein. That one didn't work because I was too gloppy, but you get the idea. Let me put another, this one needs a leaf here. So you got it too wide at the bottom. I should have stood up, then flattened, and then came up with a, but like I said, I'm never perfect, so I accept those type of leaves. Again, I'm just playing around as I'm waiting for things to dry. We don't have to add any more leaves than I started out with. If you want to add a few more, I like adding lots of green at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to stop here. 
So I've got quite a bit of the darker yellow is dry, that yellow ochre. So now I'm going to go into some daffodil yellow. Okay, this has gotten too thick on my palette, so I'm going to have to put out some fresh paint. And I am going to start right here adding the brighter yellow. Just pull it up. You don't have to bring it all the way to the center. You can actually just have it lower on the petals. A lot of mine are going to the center. I'm trying to be neater for you than I usually am, but. And then here, these are coming across here. And when this dries, I may decide I want to do another coat. And I may decide I don't need one. So there we go. So I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to decide if it needs a second coat of the yellow, depending on the opacity, and or just leave it as it is. Now looking at it, it looks pretty good. I think I'm going to leave that one the way it is. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll get some brighter yellows in there. And this one for sure. Give it a little more opacity of the lighter yellow. Again, I'm not trying to follow directly over the previous yellow. And just give it that spark of extra bright. Now what could have helped from the beginning if I would have put white, some white petals un under the yellow ochre and um, or a, a warm white, but I wasn't going for that this time. But that's a hint if you want it to the, the yellows to really, really have a brightness to them. Because no matter what, since they are not opaque, they're transparent, this blue kind of dulls them a little bit. But um, I'm okay with that this time. So now, I didn't put any more on this, but that one is fine. So I'm going to do the green on that. I'm going to put the little um, holder, stamen, whatever you call it, on there. And all I'm going to do is kind of put my hand, brush on the chisel edge, and I'm just going to drag up some. I'm running out of the dark green. I want more of the dark green. Some more thicket on my palette. Because I really want it the darker against the yellow to contrast well. And out of the thicket. That's one of my favorite greens and that's why I run out. Okay, I'm going to load my brush and I'm going to bring that up there to hold that brush or that flower. So that's kind of a back of a flower. You can make it smaller. You can make it more closed up like rounder, you could have brought them in in more of a tear, a C stroke. So now I'm going to come in, I'll go ahead and use the filbert or a smaller brush. Now my dark brown is kind of drying on my palette. See, I'm kind of neatening up. I am neatening up where the petals come to the center so that it's not jagged in there. And then I'm going to mix just a tiny bit of yellow in with the brown. I'm just going to kind of give them a highlight towards the center, just a dot of highlight in there. Makes it a little lighter, gives it some dimension. And this is where my orange is going to come in. I just want to give it a spark of light. Now this is optional. You could do this with a little bit of the yellow if you wanted, or you could leave it the way it is. But I like having just a touch of the orange, and you could just kind of dot it in there. Sometimes I use a scruffy, but just give it a spark of light. I'm trying to be very delicate. I just 
give it a little bit of texture with the orange. Be very, very careful. Just dabbing little dots on there. I got some too big. Little touch. Could do with this also with a stylus if you're a little heavy handed like I am. Sometimes I go back in with a little bit of yellow. And then at other times I come in along the bottom with a little bit of green. Just dot it along the bottoms. Now these little touches are optional. Totally optional. And they blend in so well that it just creates a little more dimension. And there you have how to paint Black Eyed Susans.